He has probably the longest drive to get to the state house. State Senator John Eklund represents several counties in Northeast Ohio. A lawyer by trade, he is chair of the Senate's Criminal Justice Committee. There are several things about that committee we want to talk with him about today in our caucus conversation. Senator Eklund, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So one of the first things is something that's in your committee, and it's a topic that a lot of people are talking about these days, and that's the issue of uh, e-cigarettes. There's something that uh, they're relatively new on the scene, um, but people still really aren't sure uh, what they're all about or how to deal with them. Can you talk about what's going on in the committee? Well, right now we have a bill that's uh, been sent to us from Representative Kunze over in the House. It's House Bill 144. <clears throat> the main thrust of which is that we would uh, prohibit the sale of these devices to minors. Um, there is going to be much debate over the course of time about the extent to which these are or are not tobacco products and everything else, but the fact of the matter is they are nicotine delivery devices. And, uh, and I think that we should do everything that we can to make sure that these things don't wind up in the hands of, of youngsters. Uh, not only for their health concerns, but also so as to prevent them from un unwittingly uh, developing a habit and developing a, a course of behavior that otherwise might lead them to use other real tobacco products. Now, this may be uh, kind <clears throat> of a broader scope of the discussion, but um, you know, I've I've heard reports about when you break these things down that there are, you know, there's they do contain carcinogens, or there's, there's people on the other side that say, well. You know, this is not a tobacco-related product. They're getting the nicotine from potatoes and other plants. Um, where does where where can the where where does it fall in terms of what the Senate is able to do versus maybe what this you know how this should be handled at the federal level? Ultimately, uh, the Food and Drug Administration on the federal level has jurisdiction over regulating tobacco products, basically what's in them and what they can do and where they can be sold. Uh, but uh, here in the state, we can control who they are sold to by statute, and that is exactly what we're going to plan to do. I would caution people that, uh, you know, anything you hear generalized about what is contained in these products uh, is probably to be taken with a grain of salt, because no two products are necessarily the same, and uh, generalized statements can sometimes be misleading. But uh, it's not too general to say that we should keep them out of the hands of children, and that's what we're aiming to do. So protecting our kids, number one. Let's talk about another um, health care related issue, uh, a bill that, that you have co-sponsored. It's a, it's a bipartisan bill, Senate yep. Bill 54, related to um, breast density. Can you explain what that's about? Dense breast tissue. Uh, many women have it, uh, but the result is in a mammography, the, de the dense tissue can sometimes hide abnormalities that the mammography other would f otherwise would find. Uh, what this bill tries to do essentially is uh, to require that women who do have dense breast tissue are informed of that fact when they get their mammography results so that the, the, the patient and her doctor can make a determination as to whether or not further testing is appropriate given the, uh, the other risk factors that the woman might actually have. Uh, this is really a matter of uh, informing women uh, as, mo as best as we can about their health care options and making sure that they're fully informed of, of facts that enable them to make good health care decisions. Uh, I know that there have been some studies that have come out in the last week that talk about how uh, risk of cancer is going to increase dramatically uh, sure. over the next uh, you know decade or so. Yeah. And so something like this, which would pretty much be a preventative type of thing, uh, makes, seems to make a lot of sense. Oh, it absolutely does. And look, you could go in and get some blood work done, anybody uh, from a doctor. And they will provide all measure of criteria of what's in your blood, the good, the bad, the ugly, the cholesterol level, the triglycerides, and, and every other component of your blood, and they give you a, a measurement of that. This is just one of those things that I think, uh, from a standpoint of women's health, uh, is terribly important that they be informed of so that they can make well-reasoned, conscious decisions about their health care and what they need to watch out for. Another bill that, uh, that you have uh, sponsored in the Senate uh, it, completely different from um, women's health, yeah. We're, but we, it's still kind of a health-related issue. It's more of an environmental thing, actually, but that's um, 
the regulation or use of recycled water. Um, talk a little bit about this bill, what it means, um, and how that's going to affect uh, average Ohioans. This is a, a, a bill that would authorize the Department of Health to regulate recycled water systems as private water systems. Um, what we have, believe it or not, in Ohio, as rich in water as we are, uh, there are many places that are uh, poor in water, that have bad uh, septic system um, characteristics in their soil. And what these systems, uh, these recycled systems will do is allow for a self-contained use of water in a system for a home uh, that will, believe me, completely recycle the water time and time again that, are, that is used in a, in a residential facility. Uh, it, is a, it is a new technology. Uh, they are able, they believe, to purify water on a recycled basis to levels that are the highest in, in the world. Uh, so pure they can clean this, this water uh, so as to use it in dialysis. Uh, it stands to uh, be a tremendous industry for the state of Ohio, which is we're at the center of the, these developments. Number two, it will, it will bring potable water to places that don't have it now, and it will solve many, many uh, wastewater discharge issues around the state that are a very serious health, uh, public health issue, and I think it's gonna be a wonderful thing. It passed out of the Senate uh, not too long ago. It's over in the House right now. They're having committee hearings on it, and I'm hopeful that we'll be, Ohio will be a, uh, one of the first states to have a, the opportunity to use these systems and develop them here in the entire country. We'll be a leader. And where would we, where would you expect these systems? I mean, typically more rural areas, areas where maybe it's a, a farmer who has, uh, you know, it's kind of, maybe has a spring, uh, something of that nature, or do you expect this to be something that could be used in the suburbs? I, I think certainly the, the initial uses are going to be more in the rural areas that don't have access to centralized water systems, first of all. Uh, but at, over the long haul, Think of a place like Arizona, uh, which is water starved throughout suburbia in Arizona. Uh, think of places like in California, where they spend a tremendous amount of electric energy, a tremendous amount of energy in California, pumping water up over mountains to residential areas uh, that otherwise don't have water. We can save energy, we can save the environment, and we can provide potable water to not just Americans, but people around the world who otherwise don't have access to it. Back to uh, bills that are in your committee. Uh, there is a, uh, a piece of legislation pending, uh, Senate Bill 121, sponsored by Senator Hughes, sure. related to um, prison terms for people who are, um, I guess, con you know, convicted when there's a firearm uh, right. in use. Can you right. explain where we're at here? Well, the, uh, the bill is under consideration in the committee. Uh, it is part of an initiative by our Attorney General, Mike DeWine. And uh, Attorney General DeWine has made very clear to his credit that uh, part of his priorities is to get the worst of the worst offenders in the state of Ohio off the street to make our people safer. And this is a bill that's designed to advance that item of uh, the Attorney General's agenda. And what it does is it proposes to increase the, uh, the uh, prison sentences for people who are uh, convicted of violent felonies with gun specifications. And if they've been convicted twice before, uh, to label those people as career violent criminals. And certain consequences would also flow from that particular designation. Um, it has generated an awful lot of interest in the Senate. Uh, many senators are weighing in with their particular views upon how to do this effectively uh, without being too unnecessarily draconian about it. Uh, it's a very complicated issue, but one that is definitely worth our, our getting across the finish line, I think. Uh, if it can be done in a sensible sort of way, because the object is clear. Uh, those who are most violent and, and the, the greatest risks to our safety here in Ohio uh, need to be dealt with in a, in a serious and, and uh, sensible sort of way. And for, for people who are multiple offenders, I mean, the, the, I, I don't know what all the statistics are, but I would, I would venture to say that, that those are the people that you're, you're really wanting to make sure they're t are taken care of, not the you know, it's the, it's the people who, uh, maybe a smaller group of people, but they're the ones who consistently offend. Absolutely, and, and the Attorney General can provide statistics that, with regard to the number of serious crimes that are committed in Ohio, that are committed by people who have already done this sort of thing, the repeat offenders. And, uh, and this bill is designed to, to uh, address that particular issue in a very meaningful and purposeful sort of way. Before we wrap up here uh, quickly, just want to talk with you about 
um, a piece of legislation that we've been talking with a number of senators about when they come to visit okay. with us, and that is um, really what was our priority piece of legislation. You know, we've talked a lot about jobs and economic development being our top priority in the Senate. Senate Bill 1, which Senator uh, Bill Beagle sponsored, which is the you know, Workforce Development Revolving Loan Fund. Right. Um, talk a little bit about uh, passage of that uh, piece of legislation and how you're seeing that affect your district. Well, I think the important thing about it to me was that it's what underlies it is a recognition that our education system can be part of our workforce development continuum, if you will. Uh, for too long here in Ohio, we've had our education system over here teaching our students and, and giving them a, a schooling education. And you've got workforce developers over here uh, who are trying to find people who can do the jobs that are available for young people here in Ohio. Uh, getting those two elements of our society working together toward a common goal, an education that makes somebody not just degreed, but also job, uh, profession ready, uh, is, is, stands to help not just the educational system, but also our workforce development efforts. So I view this as, as one of those beautiful combinations of two really important policy issues come together in a single bill uh, that stands to help both. And uh, I was very, very proud to support that one. Well, thank you so much, Senator, for your support and also for your time with us today. I'm more than happy to do it, and thanks for everything that you do. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. As always, you can keep up to date with us every day on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Ohio Senate GOP, or visit our website, ohiosenate.gov Republicans. Thanks for watching.